Hej. Hej. Mm. Yes, mm. Right, I'm, I'm saying you look. Uh, who, who do you want to pick next? Micah. Mika in Sweden? Mika, yes. Hello, Mika in Sweden. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello. How's it going? It is going well. How is it you? Micah or is it Mika? It's Micah. Micah. Ah. Okay. From the Old Testament. Yeah, I have a I have a friend named Micah. Okay, there we I was go. Like, Wait. <laughs> Probably originally Mika. <laughs> well, uh, apologies about that. Uh, what can we help you with today? No worries. Sorry. Um... <clears throat> Well, I, I think I just uh, started to do some research mm. on uh, atheism, and it was I was just very curious about it to mm -hmm. see what the philosophy was and <clears throat> if there was a common belief. Mm -hmm. And one, uh, and I've been listening to some of the debates, and to me, it seems like most of the debates I've heard, it seems like the uh, the atheist and the religious are somewhat on the same side of the argument okay. in that, that if you have the language mm -hmm. and words mean something, then knowing something and believing something is not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I say I believe there is a God and I say that I believe there isn't a God, I'm on the argument of saying I don't know if there is one. Okay. Okay. So my question was, what is the definition from an atheist point of view of the God that you don't believe exists? Ah, okay. So this is a good question. Which one do you want to talk about today? <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I could say, I could say, hey, Thor, uh, in heaven, the God, mm -hmm. um, I know he exists because I hear him it's, and yeah. I see when he sends lightning, you know, cracking down upon us. Mm -hmm. It's the, so well, there's no ice giants there is a God around. named Thor. What's that? It's the, well, there's no ice giants running around, so... So, they said, yeah, I think it was Odin. So, yeah. yeah. So, so clearly, clearly Odin is real. Right. Yeah, so clearly Odin is real. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Odin was Thor's Odin, Odin, Odin was Thor's dad, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So I, I like this question. <laughs> it's something that I've gotten a couple of times. And I would say it, de it depends because uh, so I initially used to be a Christian, right? And I believed in a very specific right. God. And then I did some research and some thinking and I had some shifts happen in my life and, you know, 10 dozen different things happened and I realized that I no longer believed in that specific God. And then I started right. looking for other gods, other versions of God, other religions, mm -hmm. other things that I could call God because in my head there was that hole, right? And it was like, okay, there, something needs to fit here. Something needs to fit into this, this, this thing that is now vacant. Um, and so uh, I started doing research into other religions. I played around in different religions for a little while. Um, and I realized that I did not believe in any version of any God that I found so far. And so that is when I decided to call myself an atheist um, because so far, no matter wh what religion they're from or what they are attributed to do, um, there is not a God concept or a God character that is convincing to me right. yet. And I'm not saying that there never will be. That's why I'm on the show. I want to hear if there is a convincing one. But for me right now, right. so far, every single person with their own definition of God can come to me and tell me about that God, and I have not yet been convinced by them. Okay. So when you said to yourself, okay, I haven't found in any of these religions that there is a, a God that I can believe in. Did mm -hmm. you at the same time also sort of say that when I die, I die? Um, that was actually a different conversation that I had to have with myself because for a very long time, uh -huh. I was I was walking around with some preconceived notions for, left over from Christianity that I just didn't... I didn't realize we're holdovers, so I didn't believe so in death God. Was the one for you. Well, yeah. So for for a long time, I was like, okay. When I was still a Christian, I stopped believing in hell. So mm. when I was a Christian, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, hell no longer exists. And then that kind of got me onto the "there's no God" track. 
And then after I called myself an atheist and started, like you, watching debates, doing some research, reading some books, um, I started thinking about things like the soul, right, and and the concept of substance dualism and whether or not there is something outside of our physical bodies um, and a supernatural realm and all mm. of this. And so all of that sort of came afterwards, and there, I'm sure there are still things that I need to deconstruct and figure out right. where I stand on them. Uh, but for right now... Uh, no, uh, thinking about death and the soul and the afterlife actually happened after I became an atheist because for me those two things aren't mm -hmm. directly connected. Mm. And there are a lot of atheists out there who do believe in an afterlife and mm -hmm. do believe in a soul because, again, they're not directly correlated. Okay. So my, my, I guess my thing was in the debate that you know, one thing when you start off about saying or the existence of God, I think definition of God has a very uh, big uh, piece to that debate. In a mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because I could say, hey, I don't believe there's a God, and I could be referring to Thor. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> exactly. Or I could be referring to, this you know, name. whatever God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, That's why we start every so when call you bring and, that, mm -hmm. with what do you believe and why. So you tell me what you believe first, and then I make it. We decision. can discuss it from there. Instead yeah. of assuming that when you say, Not I exactly. believe in God, I know which it's one you're talking the about. The big G God. Right. Yeah. Right, which is a, probably a really good place to start. To start right. The, I agree. Definitions are 100% important. <clears throat> So now, if you believe in it or don't believe in it, does it really make a difference? Because you're saying... To the I person or as a whole? Does it make a difference to the, to the whole person? or to you personally? Um, as far as the existence, confirming the existence of it, mm, okay. it doesn't really make okay. a difference. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I was sort of looking at was, if you look at... <laughs> Uh, what's around me and the body that I'm in, and I look at everything around me, and logically, I know what's chaos. I know what's just random chaos, and I also know what intelligence looks like, in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> if I, for instance, looked at a building, um, if I'm a logical person, I would say some, someone with intelligence built that. There's a thought behind it. It's you know, it's constructed, it, it, you know, uh, it would be impossible for that thing to just appear and fall together, <clears throat> you know, nails coming out of the ground, forming as metal and forming as nails and windows and all that. So I cannot know that there was some sort of intelligence behind it. And when I look at nature, I look at my body, I look at the intelligence behind it, I occupy this, you know, meat and flesh and bone, but there are millions of things happening that I don't consciously do. They're just happening. Mm -hmm. So then I say, well, <clears throat> there's a difference between that and chaos. There's intelligence there that I don't know what it is, and I can't explain it, but I know that, that it's there. So if I have the liberty to bring the definition of God into a debate, <clears throat> Why wouldn't I just bring that into a debate and say, I know God from that perspective. I may not know the rest. I may not know the reason. I may not know, you know, why I'm here or what put me here in a sense. But I know I didn't create myself. So, so there's something intelligent that's doing that, and it's different from chaos. It's different from dirt on the ground. Well, okay. So I think I see what you're saying, and it's, it feels to me kind of like a look at the trees argument. Mm, yeah, yeah, I was thinking. But thank you okay, for that out so of my head. Okay. Here's here's the difference that that I want to I, I want to bring up a couple things. First of all, the options are not intentional intelligence and chaos. Those are two ends of a spectrum, but that's not, those aren't the only options. That's a false dichotomy. Nobody who understands biology and science thinks that the world is just complete chaos because then we couldn't have science, the scientific method, right? right? We couldn't have science if it was chaos. So you wouldn't be arguing against an atheist or skeptical position by saying it's not chaos. They would agree. Right. Right, for the most part, not everybody. I but. think I think even a Christian or anybody that was religious would agree with that. Well, yeah, that's uh, very few people talk about the world in terms of it being absolute chaos. So imagine I've got a, a a jar, right, and I fill the jar with rocks, 
okay? Mm -hmm. And then I put sand in the jar. <coughs> the sand is going to fall through the rocks mm -hmm. to the bottom of the jar, right? Every time. <coughs> okay. Is that the sand yeah. doing something intelligent? Is somebody making the sand fall gravity? through the rocks? Right. Or is that just the way nature happens? Is it gravity? Th right. That's the law, that law of gravity, yeah. Right. Doing that. Exactly. So I think a lot of what you're attributing to, oh, well, it, it, it's not chaos, therefore it must be designed. Um, I think, again, that's a false dichotomy. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of what we see it's, it's right now. It's actually not what I'm saying, though. You're, saying, saying. you're saying that the process. What I'm saying is that I can. I have the liberty mm -hmm. to define God in my in, in a debate and okay. in a sense, right? Right. And I'm saying, hey, well, listen, here's my God. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between that chaos and order. It's life in the body. It's it's how a tree grows, you know, away from the ground, sucks up water, and has leaves. And I can appreciate it between me and that tree. Okay. But that is something. Something. That is something that's different from chaos. And I like to define that and say, well, I know that to me is God, an expression of God. Not saying that I know what God is, but I'm saying I know that's not chaos. Okay, so, so you're I saying you're basically defining God as the, of, as the existence of something that is not chaos. God is the existence of order. Well, you know, I'm talking about like, that I that I that I actually exist inside of a body that is, you know, a million times more intelligent than a house put together, right? So it's, there's so much going on that I don't do myself, right. and I attribute that to a force that's intelligent that's not me. So it's because things that can't be explained. Heart, our God is is that what you're getting at? Things that things we may not have are, the comprehension for our things God. That are, no, things that are apparently not chaos. Okay, things, things that are apparently not, not chaos that we don't is, understand is God that we don't do ourselves. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, okay. so things that happen. But, but you know the difference between intelligence and just nothing, right? So when the air, that, like, when the okay, wind blows, it's God. Kind of. Weird. So this vessel of the body, you know, million things happen every day so that it doesn't die. Bacteria are, are, are killed, the temperature is regulated. Mm, There's all right. these things that are going on that I say is something, and it's not me, and that something I can attribute to what I would define as a God. Well, not that it's something sitting on top of here and saying, you know, here's how things are going to go. <clears throat> not that it's something that is made up. So are you asking how you argue against that? Some? What was that? Are you asking that's how, how to argue against that or how to argue in favor of it? So you're saying no, that... No, I'm saying that how, how does an atheist recognize that force, which is obviously there and very apparent, and it's very apparent it's not you yourself doing it. You did not put your body together. No, so you, no, but my do parents. You, do you know how that, babies are made? My my parents got together one night and created me. There, there's there's science behind the things that yeah, we no, don't they, do they, 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 consciously. They, well, they set up the conditions for that to happen, but they don't necessarily put the the the, the, the veins together in the body and. No, the, the way your body or any other mammal's body is biologically designed to grow life. Just like if we put a seed in the ground, the way that the soil is biologically put together right. nurtures but the you, seed and you out comes the say, tree. You would say that's not chaos, though, right? Right, but nobody here is arguing nobody that chaos here is, yeah. is an option. No, this is, this is a, a okay, set of processes that creates a life. There's no chaos in that. It's right. chaotic to watch, so sure. Yeah, there's an intelligence that drives that somehow. It's but not it, just, you know, falling together, random nothingness. It's There's a, there's a force behind that. It's called nature. It's called a, nature. It's called biology. It's called science. It's called how species are composed and remain fertile so that they can right, continue they, their species to survive. Right. There's, there's nothing so supernatural there's about that. Of nature. 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 Right. Well, well, nature is not chaos. 
It could be chaotic. Sure. But they're not okay. Yeah, but there's there's balance. There's you appreciating a flower. There's all kinds of relationships and things that are just not whatever in front of you. Who's saying that it's just right? whatever, though? Who's say, yeah, who's saying that there's not a, a description or a, a reason why things happen the certain way that they do? It's not chaos, and it's not so, an unknown force. We know how, what creates how, a human being. We've studied this. We've proven it. Right, we so can map the biological that, processes. Okay, so how is it that I could not call that God and say, well, okay. I know God, there's All right. proof. So that's, okay. that is a good question. Okay, In that that's case, good, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> thank you. That's, there we go. That is the question we need yeah. to get to. Perfect. So you're saying, why right. can't I look at nature and call it God, and then would you be a uh, theist if you believe that nature existed? Why, because why I'm calling can't it. Why can I look at the intelligence behind all living things? Nature. Trees, Nobody's saying you can't. That, and me bring that to the conversation and say, that's God. I don't need to believe in it. All right. It's then right. I would say prove, like, okay, first I'd say, well, okay, why call it God instead of nature? Right. What are you adding to this why equation not? that isn't nature? And then we could talk about what because. you're adding to it and then determine whether or not it's convincing to me. And whether or not you have the burden of proof because to carry that nature is God. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's an obvious intelligent force that's working in all of these things that has a... Um, <clears throat> A, a shape and a form and a function that all happens. So there's this thing that I don't do because if I say there's nothing uh, uh, above me or outside or out there, then I think that shouldn't exist. Well, or how did I come to exist? You came to exist if because they, when a man loves a woman God very much, the future, then I do. Uh, or maybe not, or maybe, maybe they either. just find each other attractive. For an hour. <laughs> um, okay, so look. Um, I think right now what we're doing, I think it's very pertinent that we're, we're going circular started yeah. talking about de definitions because right now what we're doing is we're having a breakdown in the way that we're using words. Yes. And I think that you're using words in a certain way and we're using words in a certain way. And it's going to get only more muddled from here if we don't address that right off the bat. Thank you. So... First, one thing I do want to bring up, because you've said this a couple of times, is that you aren't doing the things that are happening in your body. Mm. You are doing those things because it's your body and your body is you. And just because you're not consciously aware of it, the rest of your brain oh, is making sure that, that your body is doing the right. things it's supposed to be doing. So the things that you don't understand that are going on in your body, just because you aren't thinking about them in the moment, doesn't mean that you aren't also doing those things. It's just that your brain has learned how to do that without you having to think to about it. To tell it consciously to do it. Right. The brain. The brain. Well, think of it like this. I touch me. Okay. I'm talking and I'm very handsy and I just do this. Did because I didn't tell my myself, hey hand, go touch V, does that mean I didn't touch V? Well, you know Does that mean that I that me myself didn't physically touch V because I didn't tell my brain, hey, yeah, that's touch kind that. of a brain function, but you never you never learned how to metabolize food. That was always there before you could speak. Okay, so then who you metabolizes know? the food? Does, is that not me digesting my own food? Oh, who digests food? I'm saying there's an intelligent force and in all. I don't have that kind of money to pay people to do that. Okay. That not, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. So it right. sounds like not, what you're no, arguing. I'm, I'm saying I'm defining that as I'm defining that as a god force. You're defining it as nature. So I'm saying, well, if I can bring the definition of God into the conversation, then I can easily say that's God. Oh, you can say that, you sure. Can show, sure, you can say whatever you but want. But you're trying to convince right. us of this right now, and it's not doing a it's, good job. No. So where do we go from here? Now we're at a stalemate. Right, because it sounds like what you're doing is using the God <laughs> so, yeah, of the Gaps okay, fallacy so, so, right now. Mm -hmm. You're so, saying, yeah. I don't understand how this so, happens. So. I can't explain it. I'm not doing it myself. Therefore, God. And that's not a good explanation. No. It's a, it, okay. Because we can counter okay. that explanation with the neurons in my brain told me to touch the table. All, all I'm saying, all, all I'm saying is that right there is something that you're not doing. We're not doing nature. It's unex, it's unexplainable, right? We can't. No, no but it's not. It's not unexplainable. All right, wait. Let, let's take the human aspect out of it. The wind blows outside. I have no reason to want to control the wind blowing outside. In fact, it messes up my hair and I can't freaking stand when it happens. That's not God to me. 
That's the jet stream saying, hey, I'm going to float over here. This isn't God. This is a natural nature thing that happens so that we can carry air across life. the planet and breathe it. Life. I'm talking about life. Wait, why are we talking only about life, though? Why are we talking about, well, you need, what about, you need that breeze for life, you need that air for life, you need the rain, you need the sun for life. Are we talking about just human life or bacteria or what? Are we talking about plants? I'm talking about, yeah, life. So if, if you have life, then you breathe, your heart's beating. No, no, that's not. going on inside of um, I'm pretty sure the tree in the backyard is alive, but that doesn't have a heartbeat. Right. Bacteria is alive, but they don't breathe. Right. You know, I, I was saying that you do, but I was saying the tree also does. The tree has a heartbeat? And I'm, yeah, I mean, okay, I'm calling that life force God. You're, You're calling, calling my the tree or the heart God? Wait, yeah, I'm, I'm confused here. Is Wait. my heart okay. God? Do you know when it, if you, if you, <gasps> Via, if, you if you die... <laughs> right. You Your body's gonna lay there. It has no life in it. Mm -hmm. Right. So then, what happens right. to God when there's no life it in it? It starts to deteriorate. It Is becomes, God dead? It becomes dirt. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's just a function of God. So if you if you look into quantum physics and everything, we're determining now that we we don't even have matter around us. There are waves and their energy. Right. So when we di dissect everything around us. It's not even really there. We're using our senses to perceive the 3D world. So the energy that we're perceiving with our senses, sight, hearing, touch, feel, are very limited in perceiving the world around us. And we confirm that now okay. that we're mm. looking into so the nucleus of atoms and everything. And when they're looking to find what's actually matter, they can't even find it because sometimes the particle becomes a wave and sometimes the wave becomes a particle. Micah, so our limited there's the aneurysm. Micah, there it is. Micah, <laughs> so here's, yeah. here's where I have a problem. You are admitting that there are things we don't know, right? You're admitting that we only perceive yeah. things with three dimensions, though there are more dimensions. You're admitting yeah. a whole lot right now. So my question is, why the hell do you think that that's God? What about the I don't know translates and to God? And I think God. we asked this. We asked this about 10 minutes, 10 minutes ago, ago before my brain exploded into an aneurysm with this. Okay. Very simple. Because I'm not doing it, something's doing it, therefore, that can easily be my definition. And that's great. And that's your definition. That's fantastic that that's your right. definition. However, I have actual scientific proof. <laughs> proof and studies and basis that is telling me there is nothing supernatural about my hand touching a table or the breeze outside Why or the acorn in the ground. Why does it have to be supernatural? You're defining what it What do you think God, God is? Is it not supernatural? If there is something, if there is a being that cannot be explained by nature, hence <clears throat> supernatural. Why does it have to be an outside force? Why can't it just be the way things are with the, there are biological processes? Why can't it be a sperm because and an egg? When you say Poof, a spine. Why can't this be this way? Is, Notice I didn't say heartbeat. Because you're, There's a saying, reason. you're <laughs> saying that there isn't something outside of you. No, right? we're not. Are you kidding you're me? I'm looking at a whole no. audience outside of me right now. Hi. <laughs> no, okay. I'm talking when it comes to your life. No, here's the right. here is the here's the problem, Micah. I think what you're doing is you have an idea of what we believe in your head, and you're telling us that we believe in chaos. You're telling us that we don't believe in anything outside of ourselves that for some reason, uh, and you're making a whole lot of claims about us and our beliefs. And what we've been doing this whole time is trying to figure out what you believe and giving yeah. you the benefit of that doubt and letting you explain yourself. So uh, we need to move on to other callers. We do, yeah. And we're going to do that. Uh, I just wanted to say, if you want to call back and actually talk to us about what we believe and why and actually get to know us as people and as atheists... And then not make assumptions that we have no idea what the world outside of us is. We would toddlers. be happy to talk to you again. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Okay. You're so much nicer about that than other hosts.